Hi everyone, this is uh, part two of the Stanford Research SR650 dual channel programmable filter and as you can see I've managed to spray the uh, front bezel and also the top and bottom panels and it ain't looking too bad. It's certainly uh, uh, a good bit of difference compared to what it was when I first got it. Um, so I'll just power her on here. There she goes. All ready for some testing. For those in the UK, it was just a quick trip to home base and they had a couple of tins of enamel paint uh, with just the shades I was wanting. To, wanting. The uh, front bezel here is almost the same original colour uh, as is the actual grey colour of the top and bottom covers, so it ain't looking too bad at all. Um, it'll do the job nicely. I've um, still got the screws to sort out. I've basically just given them a light rub down and I've screwed them in temporarily. I don't want to screw them right in because the paint's not going to be hard until uh, tomorrow so I don't really want to mark the paint uh, with screwing the screws in too far so they're just a little bit loose. They're a little bit tatty and all the rest of it. I might actually spray the tops of them black or something like that. Um, so the same with the ones in the top that hold on the bezel. The bezel there, they're just in very lightly. Um, but uh, as you can see it's uh, not looking too bad it'll certainly go up on the shelf uh, no problem at all ok we're ready to do some testing now of the SR650 so I'll show you what I've got set up here um, I've got my um, function generator above it hooked up to channel A of the actual uh, SR650 um, I've got it set up for a 50 kilohertz low pass on my channel 2 at the moment um, DC coupling, channel A only, uh, I've got the uh, input and output gains both set to 0 dB uh, and the filters in at the moment. On the actual function generator it's sitting at the moment at 47 kHz, uh, I've got the, a 1 volt uh, peak to peak with the low level being at 0 volts exactly so all being well that's what I should get on the output when it's in the uh, low pass mode. So um, what I'll do now is I'll move the camera back a bit so that you can actually see the oscilloscope as well and then I'll adjust the frequency up and down on the actual signal generator and we should see some reaction on the scope from the SR650. Okay, on the scope, 0 volts is right across the middle there and I've got it 500 millivolts per division so therefore a couple of divisions, that's 1 volt so uh, basically the filter is in at the moment but I can also just take it out hitting the button there and it's just exactly the same like, like I said I've got a 1 volt peak to peak with the low level being at 0 volts there on the scope so it's exactly as it should be so um, I can basically put the filter in now I've got it set up to 47 kilohertz at the moment on the signal generator so I'll start winding the frequency um, up and we should see as across 50 kilohertz we should see something on the scope so let's wind it up as we're just hitting 50 now and you can see on the scope there the amplitude's changed basically on the oscilloscope as it uh, uh, does that low pass when we go above 50 kilohertz. So back the way again and if I continue to go back down I'm at 40 kilohertz. Everything stays the same, I've got a nice 0 to 1 volt there and uh, there's no gain change at all with the varying frequency. So I'll come back up again. Hitting 50 now and then we start to see the amplitude dropping right down so that's perfect so whilst it's in uh, it's around about 60 kilohertz now if I hit the filter out button basically bypass the filter therefore I get full uh, amplitude on the waveform there and of course I can uh, also vary the uh, amplitude the input and output gain if I just hit it up to 10 dB you can see I've got clipping now but you can see it's going up and down and the same with the output gain it does exactly the same there so that's perfect that's up to back down to zero again so everything seems to be doing what it's supposed to do on uh, um, channel 2 if I hit the AC coupling mode on channel 2 you can see immediately uh, I've got an AC coupled input therefore the output's going to follow therefore you can see the waveform shifted down I've got zero volts right along the middle there as it should be for a, a, a perfectly AC coupled input. So back onto DC mode again and it jumps back up. So channel 2 is working exactly as it should be, the low pass filter. 
So what I'll do now is I'll uh, wind her back down to 47 kilohertz. It's yeah, and I'll shift over to uh, channel one, which is the high pass filter. Everything's the same. DC uh, coupling, uh, source A input only. 45 kilohertz. I've got it set to. Uh, currently the filter's out and the input and output gains are both set to 0 dB there. So now if I just bring the, the filter in, look what happens. I've got a fault. Basically when I brought the filter in, it's almost as if the input's gone to AC coupled mode itself. And it's jumped straight down immediately to right bang in the middle there. So I'll take the filter out and I'll go manually go to AC coupling input and you can see it's doing what it should do there. Okay, I've got the SR650 back down onto the workbench now. Um, and after probing around, you know, I don't actually think there's anything wrong with the SR650. I think it's by design I'm noticing an issue with the high pass uh, side of, you know, of the filter. Um, and, and I'll explain that now. Basically, I've got a couple of schematics here. One for the uh, low pass side, which is the right hand side over here. And I've got this schematic here, which is for the high pass side over on the left hand side here. Here. Now, basically, you've got the preamp signal coming in here. I've proven that the preamp signal on both sides is identical, no matter what you do with the AC coupled buttons or, you know, uh, turn the filter in or out. It's basically the same signal we're getting in there. So, basically, on the high pass filter side, the signal comes in here, uh, goes through this JP105 here. There's actually an op amp, a unit gain buffer. It's not actually fitted. It says missing in stage one, so that's fine. So, basically, the signal comes in here. The jumpers are set uh, accordingly so that the signal then goes up here and up to this selectable uh, via relay uh, AC uh, capacitor network here. Basically there's a couple of signals driving a couple of relays which select either uh, one of four different values. I suppose it depends on the, the range that you've set the filter to. But basically the signal is AC coupled. There's no DC bypass. Um, past this uh, um, array here and from that point onwards into the circuit um, it's AC coupled. Looking at the low pass one here basically got the same signal coming in however the signal is actually routed via J JP105 through a unity gain buffer which is fitted but then instead of going up through to the AC uh, in, uh, selection up there it's basically going straight uh, into this um, uh, re resistor network here, this FET enabled resistor network here and from that point onwards it goes away up here to this uh, op amp up the top here and basically from that point onwards the output of that op amp is driven back down through another uh, resistor FET driven uh, resistor network here and then up onto this uh, network of uh, op amps here and then that's your final output there so basically there's no AC coupled uh, signal in the circuit so you can see there is another capacitor uh, network here but that's in basically in a low pass configuration whilst the other one was in a high pass configuration there and if we actually look at the uh, selectable capacitors here on the low pass filter you can see that actually on the left hand side here where that was the actual input side on the high pass side on the low pass side it's, this is actually uh, basically a, a low pass filter because the left hand side here is actually grounded via um, JP106 there uh, so basically it's a selectable capacitor on this signal here uh, on the schematic so okay so hopefully you can pick this up now um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the uh, camera on the scope and I'm basically going to um, scope the final output from the filter stage here which is basically coming from uh, pin 6 of U115 so I'll scope that now so that's uh, basically that's pin 6 of U115 which is the final output there so I've hit the uh, AC DC coupling button you can see that nothing happens on that actual pin there because basically it's already AC coupled on the circuit via those capacitors in the relay as I showed there 
Now if I jump over to the other, um, the low pass side, I've got it hooked up as well at the same signal source. There, I'll just adjust that. There, so there it is there, and I'll just hit the AC-DC coupling button. Now as you can see there, it's basically uh, changing. There's it on DC coupling, and there's it on AC coupling. So basically that's it. I'm just going to leave my SR650 as it is. I've probed around enough. And I'm reasonably happy that it's uh, working as it was designed. Uh, but it would be nice to know if anyone else had an SR650. If they, if they could scope uh, the final outputs of the low pass and the high pass. And see if the, the signal's affected at all in the way that mine does. But uh, like I said, I'm going to leave mine as it is for the moment. The only other thing I've done whilst I've had the lid off. I've actually gone ahead and fitted some um, heat sinks onto the, the four regulators on the power supply there. Um, with, the, with the lid off the case, they were getting rather hot. Because I think, um, in part, the, the, the enclosure's designed and the circuit's designed that with the lid on, any air extracted from the fan out the back is channeled from the vents at the front here so it's basically sucking in cold air across the PCB across the regulators and out through the fan at the back but of course now that I've got the uh, lid off there is no flow of air being sucked across the regulators therefore they do get rather hot so I've put some uh, heat sinks on they're still quite hot with the the heat sinks on. I'm probably going to leave them. I mean, they're a bit ugly. It's just a, a you know, two of them are proper heat sinks. The other, one, other two are just a couple of bits of metal that I found. But I'm going to leave them in place. They're they're not uh, doing any harm. Um, they're not any close to any leads of any of the components. So I think they'll do okay down there. And I'll just leave them an extra bit of cooling. Probably won't do any harm. So basically, that's it for the SR650. Hope you enjoyed that repair. And uh, hopefully, I've got another one around the corner. Thanks for watching.